What's up guys, it's Black Hazard here with the Games Revolution and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about how how important teamwork is in Dirty Bomb and any team based first person shooter like Dirty Bomb like I said before. So let's get started, Um, it, as you can see in this gameplay that we lost, although you, you haven't seen that yet, but we lost and it was due because of lack of teamwork and lack of team communication. And these are basic things that you can do to avoid this and win more games in Dirty Bomb. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is start with pre-game planning, which it, there is four things you need to do before the game starts so you could have a better chance of winning and have a better team dynamic. So the first thing is what type of game mode you, you're playing. So you that's the first thing you need to um, understand and realize and decide what type of game mode you're playing. So if you're playing an objective, you only have to worry about one side. So that that's influences the type of mercenary you, you, choose, you choose and how how you're gonna um, decide to play the game and if you play stopwatch you have to worry about both sides so you have, now you have to worry about defense and attacking so you have to really keep in mind in the aspect of what game mode you're playing and how it's gonna affect your play style throughout the match the second thing you need to worry about is what type of mercenary is more suitable for early game and what's the best mercenary for early game which basically means the best mercenary for the first objective or the first side, depending on if you're playing stopwatch or whatnot. So if you're if you're playing attackers, you have to find a mercenary that's going to be that's going to help your teammate repair the tank as fast as possible before the enemy comes to your spawn and destroys you and prevents you from repairing the tank for five minutes straight. So you have to keep that in mind, which mercenary is going to allow you to complete their first first objective or win the first side of the match if you're playing stopwatch. The third thing you need to worry about is which mercenary is suitable for mid game which is basically the second last objective or the second side and what that means is from um, fixing the tank to escorting it all the way to where it has to go to the second objective changes the play style and the type of mercenary you need to use for that situation because for escorting the tank you need to be right next to the tank and you need to continue repairing and you need to protect the tank. The second objective is usually escort um, a package or de um, deploy a bomb. And what that does is it brings two different um, types of objective style you have to um, play. So basically, when you have to deliver a package, you have to avoid getting shot and then go to the enemy spawn, near, near enemy spawn, and upload the package. And when it's like a bomb, you ne you don't necessarily have to be next to the bomb. Like you have to do with the tank to repair it and fix it. With the bomb, you could easily deploy the bomb, put down the turret right next to where the enemy most most of the time the enemy is gonna pop out, and you could then go 50 feet down and just shoot enemies from long distance with your line of sight to, of the bomb. So there's different aspects to the game when it comes to the big early game and mid game. The last thing you have to worry about before the game starts, that's this is still pre-game planning. It's a team dynamic. And what I mean is what each teammate are bringing to to the match and how you can complement it. And what I mean by this is if there's two snipers in your team already, you don't you don't necessarily have to be a sniper because that's going to be a disadvantage because your team already have two snipers. Which is kind of ridiculous. I, I, I believe that um, a team should only allow one sniper per match to fully um, take advantage of, of all the different mercenaries. But that's besides the point. So if you're if everybody in the team is bringing a sniper, you're gonna have to realize that to complement that, you have to be bring a medic because there's no medics on your team, and a medic is one of the most important aspect of Dirty Bomb because it allows you to revive people, heal them up. In situation which uh, which allows you to hold down the aerial longer and allows you to do the objective while being shot at because once your teammate goes down at right next to the objective you could easily revive them right away and put down a healing station or give them a health pack right away so they could continue on um, repairing the objective or doing the objective if they go back down you could easily revive them again so you have to really choose which mercenary you're gonna bring based on all these characteristics so if you're playing stopwatch, you know you have to bring to, um, a set of mercenary that that benefits both attacking and defending side. If you're, you have to also keep in mind that the different objectives. So you have to bring a mercenary that's good for 
the first first objective, which is usually escort, um, ex escort the tank and repair and stuff like that. And then you have to bring a set for a second or mid game um, objective, which is comp is usually different from the first objective and brings a different aspect to it. And you also have to bring mercenaries that complement each other and your teammates. So if your teammates have um, a team up full of of uh, medics, you don't have to bring a medic. You could bring a tank and whatnot. Or you could, if there's your teammates filled with tanks and like one medic, um, bring an engineer. Bring somebody that's fast and that could go defuse a bomb fast or plant a bomb fast. Somebody with speed. So the second thing you need to worry about when it comes to teamwork and how to win more matches is the actual game plan. And one of the great, greatest cause of inefficient warfare is multiple people giving this, um, the same person the same different orders. And what that does is like, for example, all of a sudden, like you don't know where your tank is if you're playing, uh, um, if you're playing and you have like a, a rhino on your team, and two people tell the rhinos to do two different things, the rhino now has to choose between person A or person B or C, do whatever he wants because now he doesn't know what to do. So then that creates a situation where sometimes because two people are telling the rhino to do something and he doesn't know which, which one to do, he's gonna do his own thing, might leave your team without a tank in a situation where if you had the tank at that at that point, most of your team would have survived because the tank would have tanked all the shots and could have easily got like one or two kills. Versus now the tank is somewhere else and it disappeared. Your whole teammate get get killed and has to wait for the full respawn of 20 seconds to get back into the game. And how you could fix that is that you still let the natural leader lead and make the plan which is usually the first person to create a plan when the game starts. It's usually the guy that says, oh, everybody rush here and somebody stay stay at vantage point A and point your gun at the line of sight of their spawn and the, the another person stay at vantage point B and stuff like that. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do everything he says because, again, it's a game plan. Plans are, are designed for a certain situation but if that situation is no longer the, the same situation that the plan was made for, you have to make adjustments, which you are allowed to do. You don't have to wait for the leader to tell you how to adjust. And then at the same time, you become a leader at the same time when you decide to adjust the plan because of the different situation. And then people see you, especially at higher levels, like when you finally hit like level 7, level 8, and level 10, People are gonna are, aren't gonna need communication to understand what what you're trying to achieve. So if the plan was everybody rush plant inside this building, everybody rush rush in in, in the building, and the engineer rush plant, and so we could hold down the building area because there's only three enemies in there. And the situation sounds good. It's a good plan, solid plan. But then the situation changed because there's that parkour aspect and now everybody in the enemy team is in that building so it's no longer three versus five it's six versus five or five versus five it's like the whole team versus the whole team so now if you decide to change the situation or, and adjust the plan you can decide to go flanking and then your the, your teammates are going to notice that you're not going to follow the plan because the plan, plan change so they might realize that you're going to flank so they're going to go rush in and distract the teammate while you're flanking and go up behind the teammate and go destroy them by shooting them be at, uh, on their backs because they're not expecting it. And now you're, all your teammate has to do is distract them and get like a few, few shots in. And now that the enemy team is weak and you're from behind, you're going from behind, you can easily get like two or three kills in that situation. And basically, one of my, th this is like the part of the video with, which I, it's like my final notes of the final things you need to do or understand to be um, a good teammate and have like get great teamwork to win more matches. So in the end, communication is merely a tool to help you use your skills. To be truly good in team games, you must understand how the game works. To fully understand how the game works, you have to play the entire game yourself and develop a unique understanding of the game balance, the game flow, and the sense of what is important. And basically what this means is that as much as you want to watch this video, as much as you want to watch sniping videos or how to snipe videos or how to play Fragger or how to play a medic or how to tips and tricks and all that for a dirty bomb, you can't replace skill or communication. You you have to develop that, that, that skill by yourself. You have to play the game so that you can understand the mechanics of the game, game flow, how you can use parkour to get to a situ situation and how parkour changes the speed of the game and the flow of the game. 
also the game balance which mercenaries are you are you gonna challenge because certain certain mercenaries can't challenge another one because of the balance of the game and a sense of what is important what is more important doing getting the burger down or repairing the tank at this at this morning of the game sometimes it might be get that get the barrier down before you fix the tank because the tank is right next to the barrier and once you get the um once you get the bomb planted to get the barrier down the c4 planted you now you all the enemy teams are going to try to go to that area to defuse now you have a easy access to repair the tank while one or two people defend the c4 so in certain cases it might not be the case the tank might be all the way from where it started and you and then that situation what's important is repairing the tank versus um deploying a c4 because by the time the the tank gets to, the, to where the barrier is the enemy team would have repaired the barrier or defused the c4 and the most important thing to take out of take out of this video is to complement your team merc loadout so if your team has a loadout of um fast people with a couple medics be a tank bring a tank or if your team is more tanky bring somebody that has speed and if your team has speed and tank but no medic be a medic and follow plans if you're if somebody says a, a plan even though you might not agree with it follow the plan because if you don't and the plan requires all five people to do the same thing or all six people to do the same thing and you don't that might cause two other people not to do it and that plan will fail 100% of the time because now everybody split and that wasn't what the original plan was so if somebody got, has a plan try to attempt it like once or twice and if it doesn't work out or if the situation changes, do what I said, adjust the plan and people will follow you because the situation changed and the plan is no longer a viable plan. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did, leave a like, comment, favorite and don't forget to subscribe, all that YouTube basic stuff. And I hope you enjoyed the video and if I follow these tips myself and my teammates follow my tip, these tips in this gameplay, I would have won clearly because we clearly out outslayed the enemy team. We had more kills. We clearly outscored the team because we had more points overall. It's just that we didn't work as a team. When I said everybody rush, rush plant at this building so we can get the barrier down, which is more important because the tank is as we could fix the tank ten times, but the fact that the barrier is still there, we're not gonna move the tank what at all. So what what you're basically doing is giving the enemy team more points because now they can easily destroy the tank because the tank is not moving at all. So what's more important in that situation was to plant the bomb, everybody rush together because there's three three people or four people in the building holding down the the planting area. So now one one or two people can't break it as much as I wanted to. So if we would have all rushed, I could put down a turret and while the turret is going all crazy and my team all my other teammates are rushing, killing and shooting everybody, I could have been planting the bomb and my turret would have been protecting me in that little corner where I was planting the bomb. Because I also I was an engineer, which means I plant the bomb faster. But by but, but following these plans, sorry about that. But following these plans and this basic outline of how to work as a team and how to develop great teamwork is gonna allow you to win more matches. And in the next video, you're gonna see a different, a completely different game than you seen in this one. We had perfect teamwork and perfect communication, and we didn't even have to have like a plan laid out. We all like was able to communicate without actually having to talk or. Uh, having to actually write it out and we were able to achieve like each side um well and when we were when we were the attackers we were able to attack and complete all the objectives in under six minutes we we practically did it like in five minutes speed ran that because we worked as a team and and when it came to defending side we didn't allow them to even complete the first objective i, I don't think and we were just holding them down because we worked as a team we knew that w we could trust each other and we didn't have to talk we knew that by where you your movement your game flow your play style we could understand and interpret what you're trying to say and what you want us to do to to help each other and that's what great teamwork is and that's what a great team build build up and dynamic is so so keep in keep in mind that that video is coming out soon so don't forget to subscribe or just keep on checking back so you guys see what a real good teamwork team that have real good teamwork is like and how fun that that type of situation can be.